Welcome to another week of remote. Um, this video is basically um, the lesson and it uses an app uh, that you've seen before that it's almost like the whiteboard and it's a lot easier than trying to draw fractions right in front of you. So the goal for this lesson and for this week is to represent fractions again and to introduce equivalent fractions. Uh, so this video is just mostly representing and then the equivalent fractions will uh, come in a later video. Uh, anyway, so let's get started. So the first fraction you're going to see is, is 6 tenths. Now, um, I said last week that the big wagon wheel thing is, is not my preferred way of, uh, of showing fractions, and there is a reason. Uh, but for now, we're just going to represent this fraction using circle counters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my 10 circles. So here's circle 1, 2. Now, I'm also going to try to put the circle counters in a way that they can line up easily so that there's uh, the same number on the top row as in the bottom row, okay? So that it forms like a rectangle around, right? So there's five and five. And if you if you do that, like almost like drawing an array, uh, it does help in the future. Now, out of these 10 circle counters, the 10 circle counters represent the whole. Each of the circle counters are the same size so they're equal parts of a whole, or at least I try to draw them that they're the same size. So the whole thing, uh, the whole thing here, right, if I draw around it, it represents the whole, okay? Now, I'm gonna undo those lines so that they don't get in the way. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna represent my six parts of a whole. So I'll color here. There we go. And that's it. So obviously, if I had a, a regular paper, I can color a little bit better. But then, so this is six tenths. Now, I should say last week that it's, um, you know, it's six tenths shaded and then four tenths not shaded. But it just, again, again, that that's how, depends on how you see the fraction. Okay, so uh, 10 circle counters, all the 10 represent the whole. And out of the whole, six tenths are shaded, and I'll even add that. Okay, so that's the first uh, part, representing fractions using circle counters. Now, the other way we're gonna represent fractions is using a number line. Um, for this example, what I'd like you to do is sort of ignore that there is a, um, that there is an A, like ignore the A here, and ignore the B here. Okay, just ignore them it, because this is just basically a line segment. So we also have to imagine that the whole, the, this line from here to here is the whole. And whatever model we use, we have to split it up into five equal parts. So I'm going to take my uh, pencil again and I'm going to split it up into five equal parts. Now, let's see here. So there we go. And then there's the end. Okay. Now, um, let's see, so one, two, uh, pardon me. Okay, so five equal parts. So if I make this one, uh, two, three, four, and then here's five. Now, we can count up with a fraction and we can say that um, over here, this is zero fifths, and then this would represent one fifth. Okay, this one would represent two fifths. That line, okay, you get the idea, so I'll just finish. And the final line represents five fifths. Okay, we can also imagine that, that zero fifths is the equivalent of zero and that five-fifths is the equivalent of one, right? Now, to represent th uh, three-fifths on the number line, the only thing that you can really do is, uh, you know, shade from here to here, okay? So that's three-fifths, right? Now, the next example, there's a couple of ways you can do this one, and it really just depends on how you, you kind of see it, right? Now, you can do one 
line. So I'm going to add a line segment because, uh, well, I'll explain later. Okay, so there we go. And is it here? Okay. So this takes the fractions that we've done in the past, right? So it takes six tenths from the circle counters and it takes um, the fifths, right? So I, I didn't change the numbers so that the, you know, the video is a little bit quicker. Now, I'm going to put six tenths on the number line because if you recall, we, we use circle counters. And to really compare the fractions, you have to use the same model, okay? We can't go back to the circle counters and then compare that to a line representation. So they both have to be the same model. So what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to, you know, instead of five equal parts, I'm going to make 10 equal parts. Okay. Now I measured out my line before so that I know that every other line is like one tenth. So now if I, I if I count my equal parts, I know that there's one equal part, two equal parts, three equal parts, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay? Now just like before, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna put the fractions and I'm gonna say, okay, this is this here is zero tenths. Okay, this is one tenth. Now I have to write small, but I, I don't think you can see it. And then this is two tenths. I'm still writing small, this is three tenths. Here's four tenths. Here's five tenths. Here's six tenths, which is our goal. Here's seven tenths. Here's eight tenths. Here's nine tenths. And then finally, here's 10 tenths. Okay, and then again, that it doesn't change that this is the equivalent of zero and that 10 tenths is the equivalent of just one, right? Now for six tenths, I can take my pencil again and I can, you know, just go from here to here. Now, visually you could compare, right? So you could say here's, here's three fifths, right? And then here's six tenths. And you can maybe see which one's greater. Uh, especially if it's on the same paper and up and right beside each other, that I don't have to scroll back and forth. But the other thing you can do is that you could put it, you can put them both on the same line, right? So to do that, I'm going to um, basically do the same thing. So I'm going to split it up into uh, tenths again. Okay, this is zero tenths, this is 10 tenths, right? Now, um, instead of writing all the numbers, right? Because, you know, I'll just, it, it wastes time. You can actually see it up here and I can line them up and, and you know that this is six tenths, okay? Now, the other thing is, is that you can use the bottom of the line too. And I can say that this is, this here is zero fifths, right? Because we're still trying to compare those two, those two fractions, right? And that this is one fifth, right? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm forgetting one thing. No video is ever perfect. I, um, on the bottom of the line, I'm gonna re um, cut it up into five equal parts. Now, we have already done that too, right? So you could use the same number line for two different things, right? So we did it here. Now, um, I can take my pencil and then I can say that, you know, that over here, this is one fifth, this is two fifths, this is three fifths, this is four fifths, and then there's five fifths. So the top of the, of the number line is tenths. And then, so I'll get my pointer. The top of the number line is tenths, 10 equal parts. The bottom of the number line is fifths, five equal parts, right? Now I can color both and I can say, okay, here's, here's six tenths. It goes from here to here. And then three fifths is, goes from here to here, right? So as you can see, they're the same in value. 
okay? Uh, no one fraction is greater than the other. So 6 tenths and 3 fifths are the same in value. They're equal in value. Or you could even say they're equivalent. Now, finally, speaking about equivalent fractions, uh, it's something we're going to jump into hopefully soon. Uh, the only thing I want you to know now is that there are an infinite um, number of equivalent fractions. So if I give you a fraction like two thirds, there's an infinite number of ways that you can sh that you can make equivalent fractions that equal two thirds. So infinite means that it, you can go on forever. Now, and the reason is simple. The first thing I can do is I can multiply. I'm going to multiply the top by two. But I'm going to multiply the bottom by two. And here, if we multiply the top and bottom by two, you get four six. Okay, now instead of two, I can multiply it by three. Okay, so your, remember your multiplication tables come back to haunt you. So um, I can, let's see, try to make it clearer. So I'm gonna, whoops. Okay, I erased more than I wanted, but there we go. Now this time, instead of two, make a bigger loopy thing, and I'm gonna multiply it by three. Okay, so two times three is six, and then three times three is nine. Okay, so the reason why there's an infinite number of equivalent fractions is because you could just change what you're multiplying it by. So instead of drawing the big arrow again, I can take the bottom and, and the top and multiply it by four. So four times two is eight, and then four times three is 12. So all of these fractions are equal to each other, okay? So during this lesson, if we kind of review what we did, first, um, we use circle counters to represent a fraction. And we said that 6 tenths are shaded. Okay, then we use a number line to represent 3 fifths. Then we compared 3 fifths to 6 tenths, and there we did. So you could do two separate number lines, or you can combine them, which is a little bit more tricky, but I, it can be done. Okay, and then finally, we just showed that equivalent fractions, that there's an infinite, if I give you a fraction, there's an infinite number of equivalent fractions. All you have to do is multiply the top and the bottom by two, by three, by four, by five, etc. Okay, so remember to ask for help, and there's uh, obviously questions in the hub.